All right, let's take a look at problem four. So we're told the closed rigid tank contains saturated water vapor at 100 degrees C. Okay. So first thing that stands out to me is so that just that first sentence, we have a closed rigid tank. So that tells me that the volume is going to be constant throughout this entire process. Okay, and in my initial state, ah, so I get my stylus to cooperate. So in my initial state, we have saturated water vapor. Okay. So if I have a single component two-phase system, I just have a single degree of freedom. So the fact that I'm at 100 degrees C and I'm at saturation, um, that's enough to pin down the state of my system. Okay. So just to jump ahead, so if I go to my saturated steam tables, 100 degrees is on there, all right? And so I could read off at 100 degrees, my pressure is 1.014 bars. Okay, um, I could read off my volume and so on and so forth. So let me just get the volume. Um, so I have a saturated vapor. So it says 1.6719. And that's meters cubed per kilogram, right? And I could go and read off all the other data if I wanted. Okay, so I have a rigid tank that contains saturated water vapor at 100 degrees C, right, initially. And then we're told the tank has a safety relief valve that will go off at 2.5 bar. How much heat can be added to the steam before the valve goes off? Okay, so how I'm going to think about this is if that's my initial state... In my final state, okay, I'm going to have that V2 is equal to V1 since my volume's constant. So my volume would be 1.6719 meters cubed per kilogram. Okay, and my initial pressure is 1.014 bars. Right, my final pressure, the pressure, you know, where that pressure relief valve will go off, will be P2 is 2.5 bars. Right. And so I see already that in my final state, since I know the volume and I know the pressure, then the state of my system is, is fixed. It, it's, it's known. It's specified. All right. So that's, that's great. Okay. So what I'm going to need then right, is I want to know the internal energy. Okay. Because skipping ahead, right, my first law energy balance is going to be delta U is equal to Q plus W. Okay. And so we're not told anything about shaft work. So if I just assume that I have PB, PV boundary work, then W is going to be the negative integral from my initial state to my final state, PDV. But since volume's constant, DV is zero, right? So my work is, is zero. So my first law just reduces to delta U is equal to Q. Okay, so if my goal is to find Q, then what I need is U2 minus u1 okay well i've got this right so my initial state was already pinned down all right so we had t1 p1 v1 so let's go and get u1 from the table okay so i'm in super or saturated steam tables i'm looking for u vapor at 100 degrees c here you are 2506 so that's 2506.0, and that's kilojoules per kilogram. Okay. Now the trick is finding U2. Okay. So in terms of U2, okay, I'm going to assume I have a saturated vapor. Okay. Or I'm going to have a superheated vapor. And we'll be able to see that. But let me go over to the superheated steam tables. And I know my pressure is 2.5 bars. All right, so my pressure is 2.5 bars over here. Okay, I assume I have a superheated vapor. Just to check, though, at 2.5 bars, my saturation temperature is 127.41 degrees C. And then here's my specific volume of my liquid and vapor. My specific volume of 1.6719 is greater than the specific volume of my vapor, 
so I know I must be superheated. Okay, so I know I must be superheated. Now, in order to determine, you know, my, you know, internal energy, what I'm looking for is the temperature, right? So I'm at 2.5 bar, so I'm looking at a temperature for which my volume is this 1.6719. Okay, and so the volume is this first row, and I see I'm going to be between 600 and 700 uh, degrees. Okay, so I know that my volumes between these two, which is between 600 and 700, right? And so my internal energy is going to be between these two values. And so what I'll do then is I'll interpolate. Okay, and so in this case, I'm going to interpolate, um, you know, in V for my value of U. Okay, so let me try and tabulate what we have. So we need U2, and so what I'm looking at then is for, so I have superheated steam. At 2.5 bars. Okay, so for my um, superheated steam tables, I've got temperature in degree C. I have V, which is in meters cubed per kilogram. And then let me write down U, uh, which is kilojoules per kilogram. All right, so from my steam tables, all right, I know I'm between 600 and 700 degrees C. Okay, 600, okay, and 700, and I'm going to draw a gap because I know the value I have is in between. So just so I can make that clear. At 600, my specific volume is 1.6101. And at 700, I'm 1.7952. Bam. And then in terms of U, uh, 3301.9. Okay, and at 700... I'm 3479. Three, four, seven, point seven. Okay, um, and my volume, so again, we have a rigid tank. So we knew we had saturated vapor initially, so we could read off V1, you know, P1 and U1. So V2 is going to be equal to V1 since I have this closed rigid tank. I'm at 2.5 bars. All right, we confirm we are superheated vapor since my volume was greater than that of the saturated vapor um, at 2.5 bars. And so reading across them, my steam tables, right, again, I'm 1.6719. Right, so I know that I'm between 600 and 700 degrees. Okay. And so what I need is I need U, right, because for my first law of balance, delta U is equal to Q since I have a fixed volume. Okay, so once I get U, then I can solve for uh, Q. So let's interpolate. Okay, so let me just bring MATLAB up. Okay, and so let me, I'm going to create a vector with our temperature. So we have data at 600 and 700. You know, again, you can interpolate, you know, by hand. You could interpolate, um, you know, using Excel. Once you get comfortable using MATLAB, right, it's not that, you know, you can't do it with Excel. It's just, personally, I find it to be a lot easier. And at the end of the day, what I'm interested in is if you can solve problems and understand how to solve them more so than, you know, the numerical values. Right. Okay, so now if I want to... Um, interpolate to, oh, and so let me just jot down the our volume, our reference volume is 1.67, you 
one nine. Okay, so if I want to find um, u, okay, so let me call this you know u two and v two. So u two, okay, I'll I'll do linear interpolation, interp one. So my x variable, which would essentially be my independent variable, in this case would be v. Okay, I want to calculate you know interpolate in u, and I want to evaluate u at value of v two. And actually, let me just copy this, and let me get temperature at the same time, just so we can see where we'd lie in there. All right, so I'd, let me just put T2, and let's just interpolate with respect to T. So I'll save this. Okay, and run, I get U2 is 3.3613 and that's times 10 to the 3 and for temperature I get 633.3874 okay cool Okay, so then to calculate Q, so Q then is equal to U2 minus U1, right, final minus initial. And let me just add U1 up here. So U1, we had calculated from the steam tables. That's 2, 5, 0, 6. Now, you know, these are in kilojoules per uh, kilogram, you know, ideally if you're turning this in for an assignment, you should do a better job than, than I'm doing here in terms of creating comments and such, uh, but then my video would become unnecessarily long. Okay, so Q is U2 minus U1, so Q would be 855, okay, so let me try and write this down, 855 point two six two seven kilojoules per kilogram all right so the amount of heat that I can add is eight hundred fifty five point two six two seven kilograms all right and in doing so that'll increase the pressure of my system to that two point five bars which is the uh, maximum pressure that my vessel can withstand okay so key to this one was just I have a rigid tank. My system is initially specified by just saying I have, um, you know, a saturated vapor at 100 degrees C. I was able to get all of my thermodynamic properties of my initial state. Tank's rigid, so my first law of balance reduces to delta U is equal to Q. So then the key is just finding U2. Well, in my final state, I know I have a pressure of 2.5 bars, and V2 is equal to V1, so that system's pinned down. Okay. Hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions.